Now, sustainable seafood is more than just how the fish is caught and how many. It is mainly about how seafood is traded. Now, our guest today has made a name for herself in the fishing industry by selling the best fish cakes in Cape Town, as well as her journey with sustainable fishing. Please help me welcome the owner of Ocean Jewels, Julie Carter. Welcome to the loft. <laughs> Julie, it is just such a treat to have you in the loft. I just want to find out a little bit more about you, a little bit more about your journey growing up in Musenberg, and of course, having your father as a commercial fisher. Well, it actually all started with my father. He uh, grew up in a small uh, town. He grew up in Kransby, and he started fishing to help support the family, fishing and um, doing odd jobs for fishermen. So um, that's where he learned about the ocean and he learned about fishing and really just became very knowledgeable and quite obsessed. We've just been hearing so much about your business, Ocean Jewels. Everyone is raving about your fish cakes. So can you just tell me about what inspired you to start your own business? Well, I was kind of in between work and um, I visited the market, the neighbor goods market, um, and fr I'd been selling little bits of my father's fish and you know, chatting to neighbors and friends, everybody was like, why don't you sell fish? And yeah. I started selling at the market and didn't really know, didn't really realize I knew what I was doing. <laughs> and um, I, people just really responded well to my fresh fish. I, I had a knowledge of, about fresh fish. Yeah. I understood fresh fish and the business just started there. I like that. You know, it's all about booming businesses, especially right now, where people have to kind of step out of themselves to be creative and make money, uh, which leads me to not only only making money but making sure our environment is also taken care of what helps me remember it I just call it sassy s-a-s-s-i -S -S and that's just all about sustainable fishing and making sure that whatever fish is caught is being able to be traded in the best way so can you just help us understand what sassy is sure so sassy stands for the South African sustainable seafood initiative mm. and what they've done is they've classed all the fish that we eat into three categories. And to make it really easy, green, uh, orange, and red. So green fish are currently sustainable, so they are you are able to eat them at the current levels, and the fishing is sustainable. Oranges think twice, so you shouldn't have too much of it, and uh, red is avoid completely. Wow, love that. Okay, so you have brought along a whole lot of fish for us. <laughs> Dumi, I don't know if you recognize anything that's in front of us, so I'm going to have to ask Julie to help. <laughs> of course, please let her in because we need to make sure we, we, we're getting it the right way from yeah. the right person. So do you want to just take us through sure, all of we, it? Sure, we've got a great selection of green listed fish here. The first one is the carpenter or um, sometimes known as the silver fish. Uh, here we've got king clip. King clip uh, was on the orange list and now because of improvements it's moved the line called King Klimp has moved to the green list. Wow, that's so incredible to see um, different fish being able to elevate from the different colors. Here we see King Klimp, first of all I did not know King Klimp was this big. <laughs> this is huge. <laughs> this is a big one. The size one. of my leg. Um, but also um, the fact that here it's jumped from orange to green, I love that. Uh, then we've got our hake. Uh, Cape hake is actually MSC certified so it's Marine Stewardship Council certified which is an international certification body so there's about 400 products internationally or globally that are MSC certified and our hake is one of them yeah um, this is angelfish it's one of my favorite um, sustainable fish um, it's quick growing it's easy eating it's very versatile and it's pretty economical mm. it's good value for money okay brilliant and then just the last two before you show us how to actually cut into the fish and the right way to uh, prepare so this is a yellow tail um, it's also a very good uh, sustainable option when it's plentiful there's a lot around mm -hmm. um, you can eat it raw you could eat it for sushi it's good to make a ceviche out of it it's um, very, very versatile. And then lastly, we've got a uh, fresh trout, which is a farmed fish, okay. which is also on the sassy green list. Beautiful. And We've a nice um, alternative to Norwegian salmon. Okay, yes, trout. So it's so funny that mm. that's how it looks like <laughs> in the beginning, before it gets to Bunny's tummy. Now, <laughs> the journey from it looking like that whole beautiful and delicious beautiful, to my yeah. stomach. You've got a board and a, and a knife here. Um, I believe you want to show us just a little bit of skills in terms of cutting a fish open before we get into our first recipe. Cool, we're gonna, we're gonna do the carpenter. So I'm gonna take this one over here. So I'm gonna do it like, I'm gonna show you some tips, cause not everybody's a, it's not easy for anybody. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna do it my way. We're gonna take off this fin. Don't throw this away, it's good for um, making fish stock. Okay. 
And then you just give it a little twist like that, which is going to take the head off. Wow, that almost seems okay. so simple. That it is actually. That bone. <laughs> so um, the yellowtail and the trout, they all fill it the same, so it's easy. So now I'm going to run my knife up above the fins over there. And you can oh, actually wow. see the bone there. So you just work carefully and run your knife above the bone. Julie, if you can just turn that around. Sure. Absolutely, just okay. like that. Um, I just want all our viewers to be able to see the definition and the difference between that fish meat and the yeah. bone. Mm. So it's quite e it, you can feel the bone. So you just run your knife above the bone. But now, my tip, before you actually take this fillet off, turn the fish over, and while it's still in this fish shape, do the other side. Oh. So this is what Bunny said, guys. Who shame. I hold the tail of my fish and I kind of want to rip the scales off, but then it goes everywhere. It becomes a mess in the kitchen. And my mom gets disappointed every time because there is no fish fillet coming out. So this is a lovely this way to This is just an easy integrity. way of doing it at home. I mean, you'll see all sorts of chefs doing it their way, but this is easy. Brilliant. So now you're going to move over the backbone and just cut it off the belly bones. I love the fact that you've kept as much of the flesh as possible and not... Uh, oh, yeah, you don't want to waste. Just definitely don't want to waste. But any waste, any bits that come off, you can use in your fish stock. I guess, yes. So I now <laughs> we're going to take this side off. I love this. This is simple, Dumi, very easy to do. And uh, Julie's essentially breaking down how we're able to deal with a full fish that could be very overwhelming and just get the fillets out of it. True, Balissa. And the one thing I also have noticed is you haven't gone and specifically gone a, got a fit, filleting knife. Any knife that is sharp enough and long enough could work in this. So you don't have to go and buy a specific knife for that, right? Yeah, Even I, a thin paring knife could whatever work. Whatever's uh, comfortable for you. Okay. But as long as the knife is sharp, sharp. it's going to do the job. Perfect. Well, if you thought that that was interesting, don't move a muscle because we are cooking up a storm with three delicious seafood recipes.